Hello folks, this is a short video to show you how to use SPI based e-paper or e-ink displays. In this instance I'm using the Waveshare 4.2 inch and the 2.13 inch variants. So that's 400 by 300 or 250 by 122 pixels. Here's a quick demonstration. Note the time on the display, 12.35, 10 seconds. Um, I've got an 8266 being powered by this Raspberry Pi 3800 milliampere hour battery backup unit. I find that quite convenient. 8266 with its link between GPO 16 and reset to wake up the device after the sleep period. So currently this is all in sleep mode. The display is off. The ESP8266 is uh, asleep. Um, standard connections down JST connector can see the connections there that I refer to later on and repeated over on the right hand side should you need to. There's the, the ESP8266 had just woken up reading the um, weather underground data, the JSON string. This is what's taking the time. Um, it takes, uh, goes through astronomy data and uh, forecast data and there it is. It's just updated the display. That gives you an indication of display update time. Um, 10 minutes and four, so added four seconds. The, the overall process took about four seconds to um, to update the display. To begin with, these are the connections required. So this first example is the ESP32 uh, using a 4.2 inch e-paper display. Uh, on the display itself, the connections are available through the connector on and on both sides so you can solder pins. Uh, these are the pins I've chosen for the ESP32. Um, so chip select is pin 17. So wire it up, there's chip select, there's over to pin 17. In terms of the uh, class object for the library, note that there's a chip select a data command and a reset. Uh, so pin 17 is chip select and there it is pin 17 pin 16 is data command and similarly pin 16 is defined as data command pin 5 is the reset uh, similarly there's reset defined uh, I've commented those out but in your program you'll need to take out the comments um, in terms of the master out slave in, their fixed entities and system clock is also there is on pin 18, a fixed entity too. Um, in terms of the second element of the class, the reset is repeated. So pin 5 is a repeat of this class object here. Pin 5 reset. And uh, pin 19 is the busy. And similarly, busy is defined there. So that's how you connect the ESP32. For the ESP8266, it's the same process. Um, define your data pins, take out the comments if required, and replicate those pins in the two class objects and make your connections accordingly. Um, so in, uh, for both the displays that I'm using as my examples, a 4.2 inch or a 2.13 inch, you'll note that the connections are identical or they've been arranged to be nearly identical in terms of uh, connectivity. So you can either make the connection through the um, connection block there, um, or the colours denote the, the the pins or you can make a connection at the bottom of the display so it's quite uh, well marked boards um, in terms of the driver for selecting the correct um, elements there's the driver location on github you need to select the right display so for the 4.2 inch 400 by 300 pixels or the 250 by 122 pixel variants uncomment the line you require to match your display, comment out the rest. 
2.13 inch accordingly for that one. Uh, hints and tips, the current consumption of the display is about 5.2 microamps, both displays, they're all, I think they're all identical in the, in the manufacturer's series. It, the, this particular library uses the Adafruit GFX graphics primitives, so that's quite useful in terms of knowledge. Uh, you don't have to embed fonts, as in the examples, um, but if you can, of course, you, you, it's easy to do, but it consumes memory but there are three fonts already embedded. Uh, program techniques need to radically change. The, the update time takes three seconds. Uh, partial updates, what's called partial updates, it's not fully implemented, but if there was a clock in that portion of the screen there, uh, or you're updating some text here, you could just update that portion of the screen rather than do that sort of, if you like, laboriously long three second update. And the standby current of the displays is negligible, 5 microamps, and during update, 8 milliamps. I thought it would be useful to go through some calculations for battery-powered operation. How long would it last for? Um, so two displays are nearly identical. Within a few percentage points on standby, they take 5 microamps, or nothing if you take the power off. The display update current is 8 milliamps and typically an ESP32 takes 74 milliamps. Most of that's the Wi-Fi. ESP32 standby current is 20 microamps. Can get that down to 5. Um, but if it's on a development board because of the UART, the, the board would take 22 milliamps. Um, I've said that this system update, this is getting um, weather underground data, takes 5 seconds and then go to sleep for 10 minutes. So to calculate the power on demand, it's how many events per hour is six times the event time, and the event time is five seconds divided by an hour, which is 3,600 seconds, times the event current, which is eight milliamps for the display plus 74 milliamps for the uh, ESP32 giving a total of total demand of 0.68 milliampere hour. Repeat the process for the um, off time now. Same event, six, six events per hour because 60 over 10 minutes is six. Uh, how long does the event last for? It lasts for 10 minutes and um, that's the Five microamp standby current for the display and the event current for the ESP32 is 20 microamps um, and giving a total of 0 0.025 milliamps. Note that this is not the off time is not the dominant um, demand this is the dominant 0 0.68 milliamps is the dominant demand total demand of 0 0.705 milliamps Using a standard battery, rechargeable in my case, gives a total duration of 153 days. That's a, a need, that's with a 10 minute interval. If you, for example, if you doubled that interval, you can double the time. It does make a significant difference because that on time is dominant. The off time is negligible. 153 days on battery starting to look practical. There it is folks, I hope you found that video useful, enjoy.